Hey everybody, I wanted to let you listen to the neighbor's dog. No, not really. I wanted to show you my version three of my ultralight backpacking umbrella that is both hands-free and head-free. So I have two umbrellas here. And here's an example of a Z-Pax umbrella. It's actually ultralight. It weighs, uh, this one I weighed, it weighs 191 grams, opens up nicely here and you carry it around holding it like this and if you look you cannot put your head in the center under here you have to have it tilted off to the side or tilted to the front or whatever many people attach such an umbrella to their shoulder strap or whatever but I wanted to be able to not worry about that and have it over my head and not be blown about blown around by the wind and so on. So uh, instead, I've got a Gossamer Gear Chrome Dome umbrella, and I've made it so that it attaches to my pack directly with uh, six points. So if we look at this umbrella here, I'll show it to you up close. I've cut off the shaft to make it lighter and attached some cords to it. So let's take a look here up close. So what you see here is I've added a snow basket from a trekking pole here to the place where the shaft is cut off. And I can still uh, put this in and out like this so that it works. And add this uh, hair tie to this, this elastic hair tie. But I've bent the two holes of the snow basket together and shoved a piece of tubing through here. In the center of this tubing is a big pen barrel and at each end are big pen caps. Furthermore, I've attached Z-line cords that run along the sides, each side of the umbrella, and they're held together by a mitten hook which I will attach to my sternum strap. The lengths of these cords are adjustable by these mini cord locks. The ends of these are tied to the umbrella through the nibs at the end of each umbrella rib uh, by a lark's head loop here. Uh, these additional knots on the cords are to provide drip lines. So now all I have to do is put this up here and I've got a great umbrella that I can do that's almost ha heads free and it's hands free. It's not because I need a way of attaching it to my pack. So what I've done here for this is with my pack I've added along the sides here through these tabs that are used by the compression cords for this particular pack a tent pole section. And the tent pole section here is held by, you can see the uh, Z line here. And so on the Z line goes through a line lock B from Z packs that's attached to the uh, horizontal stay of this pack. So there's that side and coming around here, finding it on this side, I can just pull this and it's extended. So now these two poles go up over my head uh, without interfering with my view. And all I have to do is take those pen caps here and stick it on the ends of each of these tent poles and jam it down. They're, they're not going to go down any lower because of the line lock these. So then attach this to the sternum strap and attach this to the sternum strap and my umbrella is set to go. If I need to, I can look out the sides, I can look out the front. Uh, the back of the umbrella protects the pack somewhat 
And if I need to do any adjustments, like dial it down lower, I can just loosen the line lock Vs and the umbrella can come down lower, or I can grab the Z lines and pull this to make adjustments any which way. The only other thing that I found is uh, going through doors, I have to grab this and hold it in, which is not a problem. And if I have to go through bushes, the umbrella will just bend through most of the bushes and won't actually get caught. The, bushes will, the umbrella will either bend in and push away the bushes and branches or not. So uh, stepping down here, you see, uh, I can just pull these out. If I had wind coming at me, the wind can blow this in. But in that case, I would hike holding the umbrella forward with the handle of my trekking pole. So I'm hands free, head free, can look all around. It's centered over my head. Uh, I have great air motion through here. It works on a sunny day like today. Um, and even in high winds, the four points holding the, the cords holding the four points of the umbrella are great. And the two points holding the umbrella over the top. So it's a great system for those that need to have all of those features. Uh, of course, it's also easy to take off because all I have to do is come here and pull the mitten hooks off of my shoulder strap. And this comes off the top. Undo the hair tie like this. Wrap this up, find the compression thing here on the side, put this through, find the bottom, and put it back into the side pockets here where my water bottles are. Now, of course, if I knew it was going to rain again and I didn't have a reason to lower these tent pole sections, I would just leave them up. But if I want to lower them, I reach back here, uh, disengage the line locks, and disengage the line lock on this side, push the pole down, and I'm set to go. So there you have at least the use of this umbrella with the adjustable height by the tent poles back here. Of course it does depend on having my pack have these tabs in the side for the poles to fit through. And there you have it. I will show you in another part of this video how these are all put together. Thanks for watching. For the four places that I want to attach the guy lines to the umbrella, they're all done like this. So for all umbrellas, they're going to use a thread to attach to a nib at the ends of each rib, the fabric sheet. So the fabric of the umbrella is attached to the end of the nib here with uh, thread that goes through this hole. These nibs stick out because they provide a drip line for water coming off the top of the umbrella. So I've added a split key ring to go through here because the hole here isn't always big enough to put the cord through. So this allows me to just attach these rings to it and then I can use I think what's called a lark's head knot. I've made a loop here and I've just looped that through and then this goes down to the mitten hook and so on. So I've done that in four places. A refinement is shown here is that I want to uh, water will drip off the nib onto the split key ring and will drip down the guideline. So I've added an extra little bit of cord that should fall down and then things will 
my gravity drip down to this knot and then fall off here. In addition to that, I've just put another loop here as a backup, as a backup for the drip line. Uh, as far as the lengths of these goes, you'll have to decide based on the attachment to your pack and your body and how high you want everything to go. So a, a typical cord is uh, start at the nib or at the end of a rib, put a split key ring through there, attach your cord, make sure there's a, uh, some function for dripping water off so it doesn't drip all the way down to your head. And then I've looped the cord, I've looped the cord at the other end through a mitten hook and uh, come back with a cord lock. So this mitten hook will snap around my sternum strap and the cord lock here will allow me to pull the cord tight or loosen it depending on how I want the fit and the tilt of the umbrella on my head. The detail on how this snow basket is attached to the umbrella is actually quite trivial. Uh, you see here that uh, one of the six holes is simply used to uh, put the center of the umbrella through. To make this easy, I actually took the snow basket and I heated it up by placing it in a pot of hot water. The water I actually boiled and then I just dropped the plastic into it for a little bit. That allows the plastic to expand and make it a little bit more flexible. And then this presses right on. This is kept on because as the plastic cools, it tightens up around it, but also there is a raised edge here, which is used as a finger thumb grip for when you put the umbrella up and down. This part of the video shows the parts that I use for my hands-free, head-free, ultralight backpacking umbrella that attaches directly to my pack with a six-point attachment system. For the umbrella part, I used a Gossamer Gear umbrella and I've cut the shaft off and I used a tube cutter to do that. Uh, this is actually the shaft of the umbrella that I'll use as a pointer here that came off of that after cutting it. I have a snow basket that has six uh, fold symmetry. I've put a BIC pen barrel through here. This is the rubber tubing that I use to put over this. This is a half inch outer diameter, three eighths inch inner diameter. I'm using uh, for the tent pole sections. I have bought a, some tent pole sections from Quest Outfitters and this shows one with a ferrule in it and one without a ferrule in it and I've added to the one without a ferrule two of these uh, end bits of plastic. The reason I did this is that if you look here after I put a pen cap on one end over here it actually is uh, slightly longer than uh, 20 inches, maybe 20 in uh, three eighths inches, whereas if I did it with this, it would be only about, so line that up, it would be a little, it would be close to 20 inches. So this gives a longer tent pole section. These are, caps are put on the end here. Whoops, you can see I pulled that out. But these fit on the ends like this and they, they won't stick unless you put a little bit of duct tape there. So as an example, this one has a little bit of duct tape around it with the plastic out. So you'll figure that out. The cord is from Z-Pax. It's the 1.2 millimeter Z-Line. The line lock Vs have these sewn loops on them. They're also from Z-Pax. I bought four mini cord locks. I needed two mitten hooks. And these are split key rings, which I'm using four of to put onto the nibs of the umbrella that I will attach the cords to. I don't need the labels, but I bought a bunch of these because it was cheaper to buy 25 of these in a package than four of them without these 
uh, labels. So I, in addition to that, I have a hair tie at the bottom and I need four of these big pen caps, two, one each for the ends of the poles and one each to go into the tubing that goes here. So it's all a pretty inexpensive system here. I think these, if you buy the poles, they're about $5 each, and the rest of this is not too expensive. The other thing I've done, as I should show you here, is that the pole that I cut off, or the shaft of the umbrella, the handle that I cut off, I've actually put a piece of nylon screw in here and wrapped it with a little bit of black duct tape. Uh, if I the screw goes in about halfway and what that means is that I can actually screw this back into my umbrella if I wanted to and use it as an umbrella the bolt that I bought for that is this uh, one and a half inch long nylon coarse thread five eighths inch uh, nylon bolt so uh, that could be used also. In fact, I'll show that to you here. I'm not sure if the lighting is good or not, but this can actually physically screw into here. And this would still work as an umbrella. So just by cutting your umbrella, you haven't <laughs> made it not work as a regular umbrella anymore. Now, put that off to the side. These things here, the line lock V's, I've just uh, looped it here through the horizontal top stay of my pack, one on each side. You would have to see how it works with your pack, whether you can do that or not. So clearly my method here is works with my pack, which is a Z-Pax Arc Blast. If you have any questions, uh, be sure to put them down in the, what do they always say, the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. Thanks a bunch for watching.